Hey guys, this is Andrew with Halibur Reviews, and today I just kind of wanted to put out a video, probably not very long, kind of discussing two things that I really didn't get to explore too much in the review. Um, it just, every time I tried to put it in, it felt either really forced or just didn't, just didn't fit. And those two things that I, I think really helped shape uh, Dragon Quest VIII's experience um, is not only their, their open world, or kind of their limited open world, I should say, and the subtleties of the way that they conveyed information from kind of town to town. Now, we all know that Dragon Quest VIII was not necessarily revolutionary in this area. That wasn't really their goal. I, I think that when they created the game, I think that uh, I think that Yuji Horii, what his primary goal was to do with the world was to just create like a, a more convincing, alive, diverse world. Not necessarily to make you feel that once you left that first town, you could just do anything you wanted and just lose yourself. Because admittedly, um, there isn't a lot to do once you leave the first town. The, once you leave that town, all that you're really going to be able to do is hunt for treasure chest or uh, named monsters, which at that point in the game, you can't even really use them or grind. However, I will say this, what I do kind of wish they had done is add just a few little side quests here and there. There's one early where you go to the top of a mountain. A guy at the top of the mountain tells you he's misplaced his bag, his tool bag or something, and you need to go find it. And then when you do, he rewards you with some cheese or something. And that was really fun, but there wasn't a whole lot of that. What I was instead impressed with by the way that they created the world is that it was clearly about keeping you immersed, keeping you moving on with the story, and incentivizing exploration with treasure chests. Not necessarily cluttering up or overwhelming the player with completion quests like collecting 14 grains of rice and 10 rocks. And I, th I think that was a very smart thing to do because it creates fatigue. If you look at a game like Dragon Age Inquisition, which I actually liked, this was one of the reasons I wasn't able to make it halfway through this game as an open world adventure. I, it's just, it, it just overwhelms you. Each new area becomes less about experiencing and, and looking at the, this world that they've created, the landscapes, the beautiful views, and the towns, and more about where can I find um, the next flower that I need to pick? What, what can I get for, you know, what, what can I get as far as, a com you know, as far as my next item to complete this area? And I think that just takes away from the world that you've created. And if you're confident in the game that you've created, if you're confident in the world that you've created, uh, which also will tie into my second point, I think you allow that player to explore around a little bit without needing to give them exact precise tasks to do or to take care of. Again, the, the tasks that you that you are given, and admittedly they are shallow tasks and very limited diversions, but I, I think that there's still systems that you can put to near immediate use. You get an almost immediate reward from them rather than having to go do this in order to unlock this area, in order to gain influence, in order to do something else. Now, admittedly, that wasn't really all that prevalent during Dragon Quest VIII's time. So again, it's it's odd to kind of complement it um, on something that didn't necessarily... It wasn't as bad then, I don't think, as it feels now with some of the obsession with just cluttering up your UI and tossing tons and tons of information at the player the moment that they reach that world or that open environment. Again, maybe you can correct me if, if I am missing a few games that really started doing that around, you know, around the time that Dragon Quest VIII was released, but maybe this was sort of the beginning of that obsession. It just felt tightly constructed. It felt like they knew exactly where they wanted you to go, and it, despite probably not being truly open at all, or, or not really... It, it wasn't really a truly open world. It gave it really sold the player on that feel. And personally, I think that's what really drew me into Dragon Quest VIII. It convinced me of the non-linearity, despite really, you know, it, again, you do have plenty of openness and things that you can do here and there, and you don't necessarily have to go from certain points, but but you do at some point have to advance the story, and so that becomes a pretty straightforward task. And there aren't a whole lot of, in fact, there are very very few side quest. So again, it is actually pretty pretty linear, but it really doesn't feel that way. And I, I think that's because of how they laid it out. And I think because of how you get from town to town and when it opens up and you get more ways to uh, travel the world, that also helps you. Further convinces you of sort of the size of the world and the differences in it, not only just culturally, but re uh, just region differences and all of all of the different towns and how each one has a just a unique way of handling problems and a unique citizenry. So that was that was very much added to that feel. So it, it gives you sort of a an overall task to push you forward, but let, lets you kind of get there on your own without without overwhelming you. 
Secondly, and this is gonna feel more like, uh, it's gonna feel more ranty and I don't necessarily mean it to, to, to get into that area, and that's partially why I didn't include it in the review, um, because it sounds like a whiny old dude, <laughs> and that's not how I want it to sound, but it, it will probably come out that way. It balanced perfectly, conveying information to the player on how to get to the next area and not babying them. Um, one of my major frustrations, and I am by no means against any modern games or gaming, I love, I play a lot of them, but a practice that I notice that really frustrates me, and I think it's been well documented, it's not anything novel that I'm about to say, but our, our flashing arrows, um, <laughs> invisible walls, or, you know, trying to leave an area and having a character yell at you or get mad at you, or reminding you of what you have to do, and that, and that happens every now and then in Dragon Quest VIII, but for the most part, you just, if you just explore towns, and you talk to people, and you gather information, you'll find out where to go next. And they've also created, which I referenced earlier, a world that you really don't get mind getting lost in. And that's, that's another problem I see. Games seem to be so worried nowadays and this is where I sound like the old curmudgeon, but a lot of games nowadays seem to be so concerned with the player getting lost or the player not knowing where to go next. And that, to me, is worrisome because if you if you are confident, again, with the experience that you've created in the world, and it's a world worth experiencing, let, let a player get lost for a little bit. And in Dragon Quest VIII, again, this didn't happen at all. And if you do get lost, they do have kind of an out and that you can, I think you hit start and you can talk to some of your own party members if you really need to get a clue or hint at where to go next. But I thought it was just that perfect level of, of helping you get to the next area without babying you, but also kind of moved past some of the earlier RPGs tendencies of just saying, okay, and you're off, go wherever you want and we're not, you know, it's up to you, just go wherever. That kind of left me feeling <laughs> a bit anxious, with a little bit of anxiety. So it, it it babied me in the sense that it didn't just let me just get completely lost, but it did give me enough of what I felt like was, you know, just to let the player kind of figure it out, kind of do some detective work, and I enjoy that a lot. So I think to kind of sum it up, because again, I, I ramble, and um, without a script, this is what's what ends up happening, and so I'm sorry if this is just all over the place, but I think that just them avoiding overworld clutter, just not inundating the player with quests and fetch quests and just all kinds of tasks to complete an area to be able to move on to the next area, which to me really takes away from being able to just immerse oneself in the world and, you know, get carried away in, with its inhabitants, with its with everything about it, with the story, which was Dragon Quest VIII's, I think, the, the creator's main concern is let's, you know, let them grind as much as they want to and let them really experience what what we have in store for them we don't really we're not we're not really wanting them to get involved with all kinds of side quests to distract them from the main goal in the story so those kind of i think functioned really well hand in hand and lastly despite being this quote-unquote childish you know baby in game or game that was that was not only kind of advertised as being incredibly accessible for everybody but also has sort of been derisively referred to in that way by many by many players even i think those that like the game but for a game that what but that it has been talked about in such a way, I do feel still that it didn't baby you in such a way that many other games have. I will say that I think some 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 meaningful side quests could have been put into this game and really, really, really enriched that experience because there are there's so many again, the world is so vast and there are so many small towns and small save points and shacks and things that you run into out in the uh, open that, that easily could have put in something to even further enhance the world. So that is something that they could have done. It's I mean, it's open world and that once you come out, you can just kind of go where you want within certain parameters, but I think most open world games are that way, but, so I guess it does fit in that instance, and that it really doesn't have, I mean, other than grinding, and other than just kind of, you know, roaming around to find treasure chests early, the monster arena, when it unlocks, does open up the adventure a lot more, because you are able to kind of roam the map looking for those monsters to complete the monster arena. But really, I mean, it, there's just not a whole lot else to do, but I was impressed that didn't frustrate me so much as it still impressed me. That was so little to actually do on the map other than grind, it didn't ever really fatigue me or frustrate me. It, it still kind of, in fact, impressed me with how they were able to continually convey that sense of just grandness and vastness. So I guess I'm asking, what, what are your favorite open world experiences and why? But I'd like to know, what, what, how do you guys prefer your open world games? Do you like the clutter? And if so, why? Is it just are you a ta is it just for people that are very task oriented that just like to complete that stuff? And I do too, but it just it ends up just 
wearing really thin. And also, do you like to be completely thrown into the dark? Um, I've heard, I've had plenty of buddies who prefer to have no information going from town to town. They like to just get lost. And I think that would speak to a game's really, not only how convincing, but how immersive and how uh, just well-built and well-constructed a world is in a video game if, if you're okay with getting lost. And also it's systems because there are some games where if you get lost, that's a bad thing because there might be no way for you to come back, if that makes sense. You might have to just restart the game if you get lost. So a game that can support you being lost and is still fun to be lost in is pretty admirable. And I think that's, it's kind of tough, especially with a lot of games nowadays feeling less and less like that and more and more like either a corridor game where there's no way to get lost and they're still giving you arrows, which to me is the ultimate slap in the face, or you're set out in an open world, but you're told to go do some of the most mundane, boring, frustrating tasks one would ever want to do in this world. Sorry for the uh, the rambling here. I am pretty tired. I just really wanted to get this out and before it, uh, before it was too long past the review and you know, fresh on my mind. I was really impressed with Dragon Quest VIII and I had never really been a Dragon Quest fan. I think like most, I played this and then checked out the Final Fantasy XII demo that came with it and then just kind of forgot about the game and I didn't give it um, enough of a chance. And visiting it now, you know, years later, I think almost 10 years later, I really am disappointed that I didn't give it more of a shot. Though it certainly is simplistic in many, many ways, it was really a brilliant game. It was an incredibly focused title that knew its core values, its identity, and its strengths, and it, it stuck to it. A lot of new games, I'd say, uh, could learn a thing or two from how Dragon Quest VIII used its world and its themes. I mean, uh, just as an update too, I am currently working on Wild Arms. Um, just kind of started playing it. Hope to have that out a lot sooner. I know I've said this <laughs> about my last two reviews. Hope to have it all out sooner than uh, the near two months that I've taken to do the last two, so. Appreciate the patience as always, guys. And it's been Andrew with Hello Reviews. Appreciate you guys stopping by.